I grew up in Roslindale on a dead-end street called Del Ford. I was born in 1985, so I existed on Roslindale probably for about the first 12 years of my life, and I would say was a bit of a utopia. Um, a lot of people think of America as a melting pot at this time period. No, my street was a tossed salad. We had a little bit of everybody, and everyone brought their own flavor, their own style. I learned about convergent and divergent boundaries from people who escaped these volcanic islands that erupted from Montserrat. I learned about Puerto Rican culture and that Puerto Ricans, some of them were black. I was like, oh my God, this was just all these learning experiences. I was raised by Cambodians. I had a little bit of everything in Roslindale, and it was perfect until a day in 1996 when Boston decided to drown a whole bunch of poor immigrants in Roslindale. On this particular day in 1996, it wasn't raining, it was drizzling, all right? So doing what I always do on Sundays with my brother, I decided that I wanted my bacon, egg, and cheese, and being a little sister, my brother's like, you're gonna go to the store to get the eggs. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever, Josh, I'll do it. So I go get my eggs, but the first thing I realize is, why am I hopping over puddles to get over Washington Street to Four Brothers Market? All right, whatever, let me just get the eggs. I head on home. By the time I get home, I realize the water's starting to pool at the side of the sidewalks a little more. The water's not going down, but it's really not raining. This is kind of weird, but I'm just gonna watch Ghost Rider and keep minding my business, all right? Eventually, we start to hear the water. The dogs start to congregate on the third floor and howl. The cats start to pace. Me being from Rosadale, growing up in Arboretums, I know you trust animals, all right? So I'm like, something's wrong. Eventually, I hear the sound of water. Sounds like it's coming from the basement. Me and my brother, being the investigators that we are, go into the basement and realize that there is brown and black water pouring in from the back of the basement, and it's coming in pretty fast. Eventually, it opens a door, and we can't close the door. So we're like, OK, uh, well, let's just call Ma. Ma's at work. My mom works in Cambridge. Ma, the house is flooding. Ashley, it can't be flooding. I'm in Cambridge. It's not raining. I know, but it's flooding. Within the next hour, there's a firefighter at our door saying that we have to leave on a raft. This is Rosendale, y'all. This is Rosendale, okay? A raft. Ma, I gotta leave on a raft. All right, I'm just gonna get the cats and the dog and get on a raft. The guy says, you can't bring the cats and the dogs. I said, well, then you know, I'm not going. I go on to this whole tangent, Noah's Ark, I'm not leaving. Punky didn't leave Brandon, I'm not doing it. Leave me here, I'm going down with the ship. One of my neighbors come over and said, Ashley, get in this raft. And this was back in the day when your neighbor could still like discipline you. So I said, all right, I'm gonna get in a raft and go. I end up at the Rosendale Community Center, which is at the Archdale Community Center, which is now the Menino Center. And it's pretty fun, because this is where I play basketball every day. I'm like, get there, this group called FEMA passes me a hat, a flashlight, and a car. I'm like, I can play basketball, my mother's not here. This is great. All right, this works till my mother shows up with the cat in the bag, literally. I'm like, yeah, you saved my cat, Ma, you're the best, but you smell like sewage. She looks like, all right, Ash, take the cat, but my mom doesn't look like her normal self. I'm like, maybe it's because she's wet. Once she dries off, she'll be back to normal. Ma, look, I'm like, Ma, what's wrong? What's wrong with the house? She says, everything's underwater. We can't go back to the house. I'm like, well, Ma, we're at the gym, that's fine. She said, but my mom doesn't look normal at this point. Like, I'm starting to get a little more worried, but we have four days at this community center. On the fifth day, my friends called FEMA leave. Little did I know they would leave us floating off faith forever. After that, we had to live in cars because the community center had to turn back into a gym eventually. We lived in cars for two weeks. Eventually, my mom, being from New York City, having no family, ended up breaking back into the condemned apartments because we realized they flooded us with sewage. So we could no longer live there, but my mom had nowhere to go, so she becomes a squatter. We squat in this apartment illegally for seven to eight months until eventually my mom wins an a apartment. Um, she actually wins a home off of watching TV for the first time. It was Oprah had a show on, on a special called Habitat for Humanity. Right, clap for Oprah, right? <laughs> Love Oprah. And I look at her and said, Mom, we should apply for this Habitat for Humanity thing. She's like, Ashley, don't you realize I lose everything? I just lost a house. I lost everything. I said, Mom, I just won the Easter egg raffle. I win everything, all right? So within, we're both, with, we're both going back and forth. I decide, you know what, Mom, I'm going to apply. Because my English teacher said that I'm a good writer. The application comes, I apply. Lo and behold, two weeks later, I told you so. We got picked for the Habitat for Humanity house. I'm like, yay! Now that's what a clap for Habitat. <laughs> within one... It spent one year, college kids, church missionaries, volunteers, helped me rebuild a house that we now, my mom still owns and lives on, on Hansborough Street in Dorchester. I get a scholarship to college, my life's put back together. I go back, make sure I help out for Habitat for Humanity when Hurricane Katrina hits, because it's the cycle of giving. But I still hate FEMA. I hate FEMA, I get you. The wrath of revenge and hate that I had for them did never left. It actually didn't leave, I would say, until about two weeks ago. 
I end up about to be able to perform at a special event and I'm happen to go over there like, oh, Ashley, you're a poet. I hear you write a lot about housing rights. And I go into this whole tangent about being displaced and flooded. And this random guy in the audience stands up and says, I'm sorry. I said, you are. You are sorry for interrupting me like that guy. Like, what are you doing? He goes, no, ma'am. I was on that team 20 years ago from FEMA. I look at this man with the wrath of hate. Every, it was a get out moment. If you guys ever seen get out when she stirs the cup, I immediately start, this is, people know, I immediately start to cry. I'm like, you're from where? He says, I'm from FEMA, and I have to stand here and ask you for forgiveness. I was new, I was in my 20s. I remember what they did to you, the Cambodians, the Lebanese. He starts to name, he said, your street's the street with the, we say at the same time, the wall. Rosendale, if you go from Forest Hills down, is a valley at first, if you know that. Rosendale literally goes into a bucket. There was no way you would escape. And the one thing I had to look at, he said, I didn't forget about your street, and I can't lie, over recent times when these hurricanes have hit Houston, Tampa, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico, I always say, I saw this early in my career, and it happened on a street on Del Ford. Will you forgive me? I look at him with the wrath of hate in my eyes, remembering the depression that my mom still hasn't left, remembering how we had no homes, how I had to explain to the Timothy School why I had no clean clothes, how you never came back to save us. I thought about, though, the fact that I got a scholarship to college, that Habitat for Humanity gave me the one thing I needed, that I thought I needed the most, which was a house. And then I realized right then and then God might have been working in the funniest ways. I didn't need a house. This man gave me the one thing that I needed for 30 years, and that was an apology. Thank you.